today, our champion Steve Reno of Southbridge, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of Bill Clough of Warren, Massachusetts, on Camelton Bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Cattlemen Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and I'm happy that you can join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Cattlemen Bowling, total pinfall determining our winner. Each of our bowlers takes home a permanent souvenir from the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. They also take home some money because we have guaranteed prize money of $1,200. 700 of that goes to the winner. $350 goes to the runner-up, $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously, should they tie a string, they would split that at $25 a piece. This is a $50, $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. That will go to our marksman of the day, the bowler with the most marks. All right, let's talk to today's bowler, shall we? Come over here, Phil. I haven't seen you for a while, about uh, three years, and so uh, it's nice to see you again. Uh, what have you been? I notice here. You know, I, maybe I've asked you this before, but if I did, it was three years ago. You're a designer. What do you design? Uh, pumping machinery. I now remember. Now <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. All of a sudden, it uh, rings a bell. You know, the memory goes. Oh well. <laughs> it's good to see you back again. Thank you. And Steve, of course, had a nice easy win last week. Some easy win. <laughs> I didn't bowl too well. I hope I bowl a lot better this week. Well, you had a 367, but of course bad. you had to go right down to yes, the it was final a close one. box. Mike, uh, Mike bowled real good. Yeah. It was a good match. Mike, uh, we're talking about is Mike Morrow. And uh, you two uh, happen to be in somewhat the same part of the country. You happen yeah. to know each other. Yeah, Phil's been bowling in Leeds for quite a few years now. Yeah, we've been bowled on though. teams together, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, it should be a good match. I'm delighted you're both so. here, Thank and you. we'll get underway Lock right after you. this. 115. What a way to start. Bill, one of the rare cattle pin bowlers with a high single of over 200, 206. Has a high triple of 466. First bonus ball gets him six. And he's left with a one, three, six, and eight. He's representing the State Bowl of Springfield. It's a nine for a Phil as he gets everything except the five pin. Phil is married and father of three. He had a 633 in winning his roll off. And he leaves that five there. Steve Reno. Our defending champion, Southbridge, Massachusetts, single, employed as a glass cutter. League average 133, high single 191, high triple 481. One last week by three pins over Mike Morrow, 367, 364. He has the one, two, and seven. And he begins with a spare. <laughs> Bonus ball. And he throws a strike. Steve Edis, a 684 in winning his roll off. Now Phil Clough. left side plus the five and the eight. He left a pair, the four and the eight. It's a ten.
There are still two pins standing. The three and the four. A nine. DeVarino trying to make it three marks in a row. Any combination of strikes or spears totaling three in the same string establishes a bonus of $50. Six on the first ball. No wood to help. One, three, six, seven. Eight as he did not get the head pin. Nine. This is the 16th regular appearance on this program for this young man who is the 1987 and the reigning 1989 Massachusetts Bowling Association state singles champion. He was in our championship show last year and uh, was defeated by the eventual winner, Jeff Atkins, in what was an exciting one string roll off. Jeff rolled a 136 and Steve a 133. All right, at the end of four boxes of the first string where we always take a check on the scoreboard, we find that our defending champion Steve Reno is leading challenger Phil Clough 56 to 47. 1983. And it was a successful one, one of the there are fewer bowlers who come on for the first time and win than those who have to make perhaps two or three appearances before they get that first victory. He beat uh, Jeff Hevner, but uh, then ran into an absolute buzzsaw the next week in Jim Barber, who rolled a 466 against him. The last time he was here was three years ago. He came on and beat Andy Cox and then lost to Dan Lasko and Dan was on his way towards our championship show. Nope. Left the nine pin. pin lead after four. Five, seven, eight, and nine. And two pieces of wood. One which is across the five, the other one is over to the left toward the seven and eight. He made it. Six is the fill, and he has a similar leave, only toward the right side. He has the five, eight, nine, and ten, and he has a piece of wood just to the left of the five. Hit the wood and got nothing else. It's a seven box. Phil Clough coming up. I want to thank Nick Bartone for the uh, letter that he sent and also for the pictures that he took of me off the screen. Took a sh that's a pretty nice television set you got there, Nick. I don't know who that character is that's uh, standing behind. <laughs> Al Gilio's laughing now. Get 
Good try, but he did not make his spear. He still has four and seven. Half Worcester right side punching out the three and the nine. Our crew today is Joe Sukar, Skip Peabody, Roger Rice, Dick Erickson. And in post production, George Ellard and Doug DeVitt. A nine. Steve Reno coming up. Two, four, and six. Those are the pins. No wood. Trying to just shave that two and kick it over, but he missed it. Got the four. It's an eight. Phil Rubin is our producer and director. Don Riley is our statistician coordinator. Al Giglio keeping score on that electronic scoreboard. Keith Williams keeping score for people. And there is Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee in his accustomed spot. And Steve Reno gets himself a hammer. Taking out the right side and leaving four horsemen plus the five and eight. It's Phil Clough, and he still has three up there. I have a letter from Joel Tenenbaum, and he wants to know some things about Ralph Stewart in addition to some other things. He wants some background on Ralph Stewart and uh, how did he get to be the referee? Well, let's say that he has a history of cattle pin bowling for one thing. He was a pin boy and he used to set up pins for two cents a string once upon a time. Of course, he's a rich man now, but I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> he also uh, has been a cattle pin bowler all his life. Uh, he uh, was the manager of the Riverside Lanes in Watertown before they went out of business. He currently is the uh, manager of the Fenway Lanes at Fenway Park. And he was the success, became our uh, referee when, uh, Lou, there he is, when Lou Spera passed away. And Ralph at that time was working uh, on a television show on Channel uh, 7. I think it was Candlepin Champs for kids. And so he was uh, a logical man with, a, with experience and background and so forth, and so he succeeded Lou Sparrow. Nice shot by Steve Reno. Eight on the first, and he's left with the six and ten. He made it. So fifty dollars in bonus money for three marks in a row. Oh. 
And six more. A fine string of 141, a 40 pin lead in the match. After one, our defending champion, Steve Reno, 141, our challenger, Phil Clough, 101. Starts the second string. Here is Steve Reno. Three, six, ten on the right with Wood to the left of the three and the seven pin. Didn't hit that where he wanted to and left six, ten, and seven. Joel Tenenbaum, who uh, sent the letter in, said that he's been watching our uh, Saturday show ever since it started. So he's talking about 32 years. Says he saw the first telecast and has missed very few programs over the years. Nine. Back in the old days, he belonged to a bowling group from Dorchester. Every week, they bowled three strings at the Woodrow Avenue bowling alleys. Strike! And by coincidence, just to mention about Joel said, our producer and director, Phil Rubin, used to bowl in the same lane. Five and no, that excuse me, that was one, two, and eight. Still there. And one final quote from uh, Joel Tenenbaum's letter. He says, "Like you." I've added glasses and have a bit of thinning hair on the top. Oh, does it show, Joel? <laughs> DeBrino working on a strike. He winds up with diamond, or as they used to call it, the bucket, the dinner bucket. He got part of it. So the diamond wins again. Nine. Let's see if it is his lane. Somebody in the background is hollering, this is your lane, lane three here at the fairway. He had a strike on it the last time. And this time he gets all except the seven pin. Another mark, spare, and now Phil Clough, who began the middle string with a 10 and a 7. Six pin fell the wrong way for him. He's got 4 and 10. Tough split, three pieces of wood. When they finally settle down, then he'll decide what he wants to do with it. He used it and made the spare. 
Phil was 11th in the uh, last stop of the World Candlepin Bowling Congress Tours at Biddeford, Maine. He had 12.84, averaging obviously a little shy of 128 and a half. Steve Reno came in sixth in that, and he averaged 129 and a half with a 12.95. Six was the fill, nine in the box, and again it is four boxes into the second string. So with a bonus ball still to be thrown by Steve Reno, he leads after four boxes here, 46-42. Six more, and uh, he is left with the four horsemen left side to convert for a mark. He made it. Now two marks in a row. He had three in a row to pick up $50 in bonus money and to win the first string for another $50. Bango! A hammer on top of that. I suppose we shouldn't be surprised. He is the state singles champion and had the high average in the world team championship. Phil Clough leaves just the five pin here. For a spare, yes. That's too bad. Uh, he had a nice right pocket hit right into the one three and he winds up with six down. But the four that are standing are side by side four five seven eight and no wood. Got two of them. Tonight. $50 in bonus money so far here in the middle string for Steve Reno with three marks in a row and he's already at 82 through six. The first ball gets him six and leaves him with two, four, seven and ten. Ralph Stewart gets a hand as he always does when he goes down there. Can he convert? Nope. Got two more, so eight is the fill. And the bonus streak stops right there. To nine. Spread Eagle plus one. He has the Spread Eagle, but he also has the eight pin standing. Two more. So there are still five standing. The two pin over on the right, the three, six, seven, and eight. It's an eight. Our challenger, Phil Clough. Phil has the five pin to pick up, the king pin. He got it. leaving four horsemen plus the eight pin with no wood. That is a tough, tough shot. Got a part of it, but there are still three there. Three, six, and ten. 
Now, final two boxes of the uh, middle string for Steve Reno, our defending champion, who has a big lead right now. Five and eight, still standing. Not any longer. Another mark, a spare. Eight. And he has the one and three to convert. Yes, 135 and another ball to roll. It's a thin hit and he gets five. 140. He gets a big grin on his face as somebody behind Holler's year slipping. He rolled a 140 after a 141. So 281 after two. Phil Clough having some difficulties. He still has two pins standing, a bunch of wood all around the four pin, and he also has the 10 over on the right. By the way, in that tournament they both appeared in, Craig Holbrook of Bridgewater was the winner. He rolled 1360. And on the female side, it was Sharon Rawson of Greenfield who rolled a 1234 to win. Bill has four horsemen right side plus four and seven and no wood. And he darn near made it. Everything went except the four pin. A 10. A string of a disappointing 109. And a 71 pin lead in the match for our defending champion Steve Reno after two, 281 to 210. Two, five, and seven. Wood between the two and the five. Too bad. He had to get the two. He got the five and the seven. There it goes for a ten. He has another spear leave. It's one of those triangles, but he has wood to help. Four, seven, and eight, and it goes. Not thinking alone about 400 with 281 after two, which would give him an extra $100, but thinking of putting a big number up there that would bring him back again in August for the championship show. He has two strikes in a row. And you know what that means. Three strikes in a row, an extra bonus of $1,000 when he comes up again. Phil Clough working on his spare. And Phil gets 
Eight. But unfortunately, he has the eight and the ten to try to pick up. And he darn near did it. He got the eight and spun a piece of wood over there, and it curled right behind the ten. It's a ten. Last year, Steve rolled a 437 that put him in our championship show. Where he lost by three pins in the first round to Jeff Atkins. Jeff went on to win the $10,000 first prize. And of course, we'll have our True Value Championship the last week in August. And Phil Clough gets another mark. Here comes Steve Reno, two strikes up on the board. Everything down except the five pin. And a piece of wood came back and hit it, but not hard enough. He was lucky and he knows it. He actually missed going for the five pin, but he got a piece of wood that was behind it and he was able to have it kick back and knock it down. So another $50 is in bonus money. And an opportunity to convert again. He has seven down and the three pins up are the three, six, 10 with wood in between. He has it, $50 more in bonus money. But more important, he's rolling well on his way to a big 400. He's got 76 plus through four. Or in the fourth, I should say, not through. Phil Clough. Phil gets eight, leaving himself the three and four. Can he make it? Oh, he came so close to doing it. Got the three, but the four is still standing. Four a 10. Four horsemen right side and the eight pin. And one piece of wood off to the left, which, well, it's rolling a little bit closer now, but I doubt that it will be of any assistance. He left two. A three and the six. Steve Reno. Five is the fill on the spear, but it's going to be a tough one to make. He has three, six, ten on the right, four, seven over on the left. He got everything except the four pins, so the bonus streak stops there. through five and another strike another hammer Phil Clough coming up to roll in the seventh and eighth of the third string there is of course no doubt that Steve Reno will win and he will be challenged by one of the best, Paul Berger, next week. And Phil Clough 
picks it off for a spare. Ralph Stewart gets a loose pin and gets a hand. And Phil Clough picks up seven more. He's left with the three, six, and ten. And he's got it. Two in a row for Phil Clough. All right, Steve Reno in the sixth is at 100 with two bonus balls to be thrown. And the first one gets him six. One, two, nine, and ten. Wood to the left of the two pin, wood in front of the nine. Can he make it go? The two pin is rocking, but it won't go down. All right, that puts him at an even 400 right now. He is at 400 with three boxes to go. Missed the head pin and winds up with one, two, seven, eight, ten. Still has one and ten. At four oh eight right now. Qualifying rounds for the state championship take place at 43 bowling centers throughout the state in southern New Hampshire starting March 31st. The all new tournament for adult has two categories. The regular open class and Phil Clough gets a drop of nine and he has the seven to pick up for bonus money. The open events and the all new 100 percent handicap for men and women and the winners of the open events will be determined by the final competitions right here on channel five. State tournament brochures for men women and youths are available now at all 83 member bowling centers. Bill Clough. Hoping to make it three marks in a row as he has to pick up the seven pin. He goes for it and he's got it all over it. So $50 in bonus money for Phil Clough. All right, come on. And he gets eight on this one and he has an excellent opportunity for another mark which would be the three and the five with wood in between. <laughs> Waiting for a piece of wood to settle down. Too bad. He missed what <clears throat> should have been his fourth consecutive mark. It's still an excellent string of 140. All right, 409 right now for Steve Reno. Two boxes to go. And he would like to make it something better than 429. Yeah. 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 
Everything down except the six pin. He has it, a spare. Right now, Gary Carrington with a 435, Don Santiago with a 425 are the two top seeds for our next True Value Championship. 419, and he puts his hands up to his head as he thought he was coming in much too full. 425. Thirty-three, and that puts him in second place right now for our championship show behind Gary Carrington. Okay, final score: Reno four thirty-three and Clough three fifty. For great personal service, as Gary Carrington in top seed. This is for our twenty thousand dollar True Value live championship show in August. Uh, he's at top seed right now with a 435. And Steve Reno, who was in it last year, is right in the same spot he was last year at second seed right now with a 433. And in third place is Don Santiago with a 425. It then drops down to uh, fourth place, Bob Shepard with a 404. And uh, Biff Cardran and Det Klein are tied at 402. So uh, we can probably expect that within the next few weeks, perhaps, there will be some folks who will be squeezing in there on top of Biff Cardran, Det Klein, and probably Bob Shepard. But anyway, Steve Reno did what he wanted to do. He wanted to come on here, first of all, and win, which he did last week. And then he wanted to get one of those 400s to bring him back again in August. And that's exactly what he did today with his 433. Uh, I told you 783 is our total, and uh, we have uh, $50 in this because we had a winner last week, and we start all over again with $50, and we empty out, and that's why there aren't too many in here because these are what have been what have come in since we emptied it out last week. Uh, that is always the case. All you know that we're asking you to take a guess as to what uh, the bowlers would have, both bowlers combined, what the total would be on a day that you hope that I pick your card. We ask you to limit it to one card per day. To send it along, please, to this address, which is Candlepin Bowling, WCBB TV, 5 TV Place, Needham, Massachusetts, and the zip code is 02192. When we do have a, a winner, we uh, uh, empty out and start all over again at 50. If we don't have a winner, we just keep adding $50 a week until somebody walked away with it. And as you know, back about three or four weeks ago, that got up to 1150 before we had a winner. Anyway, when I draw a card, that person doesn't have to be uh, within 10 either side of 783, which obviously would be 773 or 793 because just the fact that I draw the card will mean that that person will be rewarded with these prizes. Schaefer's ballpoint and pencil set in exciting fashion colors. These fine writing instruments come gift box, are engravable, backed with Schaefer's lifetime guarantee and made in the USA. And Ames Deluxe Pruning Shears, the perfect tool to help keep your roses and other live plants and shrubs trimmed for healthier growth. They cut clean and crisp for years and a British sterling gift set for the man who's not just a friend, the cologne that's not just a fragrance. Give him British sterling and make him a legend in his own time. All right, let's find out if we have a winner of $50 or not. Scramble them up a little bit, take them out. We're looking for 773 to 793. And this card comes from Dudley, Massachusetts from Alice Petrowitz, and her guess is 629. So, a little bit, uh, a little bit off. But we add another $50, so next week it's gonna be worth $100. Uh, before I forget it, the NBA State Tournament, I have to remind you, is going to start a little earlier this year, March 31st, and uh, they're gonna have both the 100% handicap and also the uh, open, and the open classifications will be carried here on Channel 5, as you know. All right, our uh, high-low jackpot is interesting. That's up to $500, so Steve, take a try at it. Oh. 
Yeah. I know, you just can't hit the head pin, right? <laughs> Phil Clough. Okay, Phil, if you'd come over here, please. Boy, you ran into a buzzsaw today, didn't you, huh? Yeah, I sure did. All right, we have uh, uh, $350, of course, for just, just showing up here. All you had to do was win a, a roll of <laughs> and that's the easiest thing in the world. And uh, $50 in bonus money and a souvenir from the Ace Trophy Company, and it's nice to see you again. Okay, All right. And Steve, well, you did what you wanted to do, huh? Got a you second get the, chance. That's right. You get the $50 gift certificate from True Value, the big trophy from the Ace Trophy Company, $450 in bonus money, $700 for winning, and uh, now you're just going to relax for a week, and then we'll throw Paul Berger at you. That's a rematch of a couple of years ago. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Should be a good one. Paul Berger against Steve Reno next week. Don Gillis for the whole crew. See you then. Basketball, baseball, and hockey. Flexol's modern aloe vera base.